The Dumping Ground is a spin-off from Trespeaker Returns, which was the sequel series to the story Trespeaker. The franchise doesn't tend to shy away from representations of serious topics like LGBT discrimination or people of colour discrimination. And whilst the later seasons of the Dumping Ground have been tending to its younger demographic, not really doing mature topics like its predecessor show did, I was absolutely amazed uh, by last night's story, which covered some very good representation of that being Beck, who is already an interesting character introduced to us last season, where the character was brought into care after her grandma couldn't deal with her, but we later found out that she has an introverted personality after she was br brutally bullied by her friends and her grandma after her mum died. Her mum's death was revealed later in a centric episode in the A part of this season of that she died due to a careless driver that drove into a car. Last night we had Beck actually coming face to face with her mum's killer which was extremely powerful so today I'll be reviewing Keeping Face. Beck cleaning under her bed to find some cloth belonging to her mother was some great foreshadowing and reminds her of the day of the verdict for her mum's killer, which was some very mature stuff. Ruby coming to the care home with both her and Beck knowing little about the massive impacts Ruby's mum will have done to Beck made some great build up to the episode before the titles rolled. Merely being unaware of the implications of the two being together due to Ruby's paperwork still having to be sent was great, given that no one knows yet why these two can't be together. Uh, but was the audience. Ruby reveals a little about her mother because she doesn't want to, which reminds Beck of herself and assumes that she's dead also. Now feeling that she finally has someone in the house that understands her, as uh, she doesn't particularly get on well with the other residents since her traumatic background with her friends and how they bullied her. The scene where the two confined in each other was a very mature and powerful scene giving some relatability for the audience at home that may have a deceased parent or one in prison. The animation that the show does uh, they do to express how the character is feeling in a particular situation and it's great here showing that Beck kept herself to herself in her own literal bubble until Ruby came along where she finally found someone who understands her and lets her in. Beck over here is merely telling Ruby that it's still going to be a while till she can meet with her mother who we find later was released recently after serving two of her original four year sentence and Beck feels hurt and angered especially because she thought she had finally found a friend that understood her. Ruby opens up to Beck about her mum and that her careless driving killed someone which was quite chilling stuff especially because it's on children's television. Beck being told by Ruby about the reduced sentence and Beck's Certainly comparing the picture of her mum that Ruby has with the mugshot of the article that Beck has kept was great build up to the realisation of Ruby's identity and Beck instead of yelling at her she quietly tells her to leave the bedroom. Beck attempts to drown herself out in music, a trait that had already been established before in a previous Beck centric episode, that being the anniversary of her mum's passing. Viv comes in to see if Beck's okay as she recognises what she's doing with the music because she was with her in that episode. Beck doesn't want to comfort in her and keeps herself to herself and Beck later tries to tell Maylee about Ruby but Maylee has something to tell Ruby instead so she'll have to wait. Beck overhears Maylee and Ruby's conversation of the possibility that Ruby could go back to meet with her mum and Beck feels quite angry about this so she plots to trick Ruby into seeing her mum which would breach her mum's early release and send her back to prison because if she can never see her mum again Ruby shouldn't either. This scene is where we see Beck decide to take matters into her own hands and as the two head out Millie is shocked when she receives Ruby's email which surely shows the true serious implications of them being together. Beck coming face to face with her mum's killer was truly powerful stuff and her trying her hardest to keep a straight face until Millie arrives was brilliant. Millie arrives which is then when Beck's outburst, something that she may have been building up for so long, arguably even before Ruby's arrival comes out. We find that Ruby's mum has so much guilt for what she has done when spending time in prison and even when Beck had a rose the opportunity to send her back there, she quickly agrees knowing that the shortened sentence wasn't good enough. 
Vex seeing Ruby and her mum sub together in each of his arms makes Beck realise that she doesn't want to go through with it as this isn't what she wants as she don't want to put Ruby through the same pain of missing her mum the same way she did when her mum died and that was such a powerful and beautiful scene. Millie talks with Beck after returning home in the office where Beck tells Millie that she feels empty possibly because there's no more pent up aggression with the possibility of ever seeing her mum's killer because she had done so today. To where Melee replies with that everyone is here for her but she needs to let people in so they can help her which again was such a sweet scene. The episode ends with Beck putting a tape player and headphones in the box possessions from her mum symbolising a sense of closure with a small smile at the end. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think of this episode and I'll see you guys next time.